So there's a lot of myths and misconceptions when it comes to bike frame materials, and it can be a touchy subject. Steel is real, but why? Are aluminum frames actually stiffer? If so, what the heck does that actually mean? Are steel frames actually more comfortable than aluminum frames? Being an engineer is probably the first thing that my parents wanted me to do, but the last thing that I wanted to do. I'm no engineer, but I did read up on frame design and a little bit on materials engineering. Along with that, I also have a lot of experience writing both aluminum and steel frames, so I know how they feel. Hopefully, after you watch this video, you'll be able to separate fact from fiction when it comes to people making generalizations about frame materials and ride quality. Today, we'll take a look at the differences in ride quality between steel and aluminum frames, and why exactly they have those ride quality differences. Generally speaking, differences in ride quality are not because of the frame material itself, but it's because of the design that each material requires. And to get a better picture of what is going on inside a frame designer's head when they're thinking about building a bike, let's take a look at the Builder's Triangle. Oh. Ah, some good tea. Alright, so this is the Builder's Triangle. Alright, and like, like any self-respecting triangle, this triangle has three sides. So when builders or designers or whomever are making a bike, they're trying to balance three things that are all interrelated. First is stiffness, the second is weight, and the third is strength. And when you change one of these aspects, the others also get changed. For instance, if you add more material to a bike to make it stiffer, you're also going to increase its strength. Probably. I'm not an engineer. Remember that and you're also going to increase its weight. But if you want to make a bike lighter, say you want to decrease its weight, you're also going to, so you're probably going to use less material, making it less stiff, which means you're also going to make it prone to dents and buckling and all sorts of not fun stuff. And builders consider three things when they're trying to balance their builder's triangle. The first thing that they consider, the material. The second thing that they consider is the tubing diameter. And thirdly, is the tubing wall thickness. So builders try to balance all these three things to make a stiff enough bike that is strong enough that will be light enough. By choosing the right material, the tubing diameters and the tubing wall thickness in order to achieve this nice builder's triangle. So the first part of our triangle is stiffness. Now, we use the word stiffness and throw it around a lot, and a lot of times, we don't really know exactly what we're talking about. But for the purposes of this video, I'll define stiffness as the amount of flex that a frame gives during the pedal stroke and while riding over bumps. Steel frames are generally considered to be less stiff than aluminum frames, but steel as a material itself is stiffer than aluminum. But steel frames are less stiff than aluminum frames, because steel frames tend to have smaller diameter tubing and thinner sidewalls, because a builder can only make the diameter of steel tubes so big and the tubing so thin before they risk the frame failing with regular use. Aluminum frames, on the other hand, tend to have bigger diameter tubings and thicker sidewalls, giving these frames stiffer ride characteristics. Frame builders can do this with aluminum by using more material without making the bike too heavy because aluminum has one third the density of steel. To summarize stiffness, aluminum frames are stiffer because of the design. They have thicker and bigger tubes than steel frames. But with that, there's also a couple of misconceptions about stiffness itself. The first misconception is that stiffer frames mean less comfortable, but this really isn't all that true because comfort doesn't really come from your frame. To a certain extent it does, but comfort mainly comes from first and foremost your fit, second your tire pressure and how high it is or low it is for more comfort, third your saddle, and fourth your frame geometry, with the dimensions of bike tubes being pretty far down on the list of things that give you comfort. Stiffer doesn't necessarily mean less comfortable. The second misconception about stiffness is that less stiff frames are slower because they are less efficient at power transfer. But according to bike genius Sheldon Brown, steel frames act as a really efficient spring. So when this frame flexes, eventually all of that energy that is lost in the frame is not actually lost and it gets transferred to the drivetrain and to your rear wheel. Sheldon Brown argues that aluminum frames feel faster because they are stiffer. You can feel your direct input to the pedal go into your rear wheel, which makes you think that you're going faster, when in reality, you're probably
probably not going any faster. These feelings of comfort and this feeling of power transfer is directly related to frame geometry. The chainstay length affects how the frame will feel when it rides. A more comfortable frame will have longer chain stays so you're not bouncing around on top of the rear wheel, while on the other hand, shorter chain stays will let you feel the input that you are putting into your rear wheel because you are like sitting on top of your rear wheel so it feels like you're going fast. This can be seen in the geometry differences for my relatively long chain stay for a fixed gear All City Nature Boy, which is pretty comfortable to ride, compared to the very short wheel based, short chain stay aggressive geometry. Chinelli Parallax. You're like sitting directly above of your rear wheel and you're going to feel the power behind each pedal stroke, although it's probably not the most comfortable thing for distance rides. Now the second part of our little builder's triangle is weight. Even though builders use more material when constructing aluminum frames, because aluminum has one third the density of steel, aluminum frames of comparable quality tend to be lighter than steel. And the key here is comparable quality. A mid to high quality steel frame will be lighter than a low quality aluminum frame because of budding. And budding just means that some parts of the tube have more material than other parts to add strength while reducing the overall weight of the frame. If weight is something that's important to you, consider getting an aluminum frame. Or you could just like ride more. That'll make you faster. Also that's free. So far it sounds like aluminum frames have a big advantage over steel frames, but steel is real. But why exactly is steel real? With that, let's take a look at our third part of the triangle, strength. When we're talking about how strong a bike is, we're really referring to two things. How long is the bike going to last and how much abuse can the bike handle? And here is really where steel has the upper thigh over aluminum. In materials engineering, there's this fancy word called fatigue strength. Fatigue strength is a material's ability to survive repetitive forces like pedal strokes. Because steel acts as a spring, it has an infinite fatigue strength. No matter how many times you apply a force to steel, if the steel doesn't break the first time, it's not going to break any other time that you apply that force. In other words, there is no straw that is going to break the steel camel's back. I'm not sure if I'm using that idiom correctly, but we're rolling with it. Aluminum, on the other hand, does have a limited fatigue strength, and if you use it enough times, it will eventually break. Fatigue strength is why you can build up a vintage steel frame from the 70s or even earlier, and why it's generally a bad idea to build up an aluminum frame from the 80s. Because aluminum will fail with enough use. The second part of strength is durability and how much abuse a frame can handle. Steel can really take a beating and it's the most reliable material that you can make a bike out of because it requires the most amount of force before bending or breaking. This means that you could generally be rougher with steel frames that can handle more abuse and they're more likely to survive a crash. Because aluminum is less dense, it is a softer material which means that it will dent more easily. These dents are weak points where the frame is more likely to crack or bend or snap. Generally speaking, aluminum frames, although they are stiffer, although they are lighter, they are more fragile than steel frames. And while we're talking about durability, let's clear up some misconceptions about steel and aluminum as materials. A lot of people think that aluminum frames are better suited for wet condition riding because aluminum doesn't rust. That statement is true. Aluminum does not rust. Rust refers to oxidized iron and iron is found in steel. Although aluminum doesn't rust, aluminum does corrode corrode, and corrosion to aluminum is just as devastating as rust to steel. So yes, it is correct to say aluminum does not rust, but it does corrode. And those are the three points through our builder's triangle. Builders try to balance a bike's stiffness to weight to strength ratios, and messing with any one of these will affect the other two, so it really is a balancing act. Good and bad bike frames can be made out of any material. Steel, aluminum, carbon, titanium, feta cheese, probably not that last one. It's not so much the materials themselves that change the ride qualities of the frame, but the builder's decisions and the design that goes into building with those materials that changes those ride characteristics. I personally like the liveliness of steel frames and I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of weight to get a heck of a lot more reliability and durability. So steel is my personal favorite frame building material. What is your favorite frame material to ride? Let me know in the comments.
And if you want to stay updated on the channel and know exactly when videos are going to be uploaded, please do follow me on Instagram and Twitter to stay updated and to get in touch and to, I don't know, be cool with me or something. And if you're new to the channel, please do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button if you do want to see more fixed gear videos. I got a ton like this one. I'll get some more right to you if you just hit that subscribe button and allow me to send these videos to your sub box and we could be friends. Maybe not friends, but we could be subscriber and creator people. And lastly, is it storming where you are like it's storming where I am? If so, if it's too rainy to ride, please do feel free to check out another one of these videos. And with that, 